Hey kids, John here. Wanted to talk about trumpet stands for just a second. This is the old Hamilton trumpet stand. This was the new invention many, many years ago that was a really solid stand and would last a really, really long time. I mean, this is probably a stand from the 70s. This is probably a 25, 30, maybe year old stand, 35 years old, who knows. And it's a good solid stand. You could adjust it. You could put a flugelhorn on it. And if you find one of these that's in decent shape, it's worth having. With a flugelhorn, a little tippy, not too bad. With a trumpet, it can be slightly scary if somebody comes by and kicks it, it's going over. So, not my best choice, all right? Now, what did Hamilton do in the, in, for you lately? Well, they've come out with a very interesting stand. It's a very intense modular setup that you can put a couple of these things together. The way this works is you've got basically a tripod stand, all right, like this, that you have posts. The center post is here, and then you can put different posts on the legs, and you can combine them. There's a, a clamp mechanism that lets you slide the two legs together and clamp it on. So you can make a venerable fort around you, all the way around you, you can have horns, all right? And the nice thing is, you can adjust every one of these pieces so you can dial it in for exactly what size, shape, whatever you want. So I've got a B flat, I got a C, I got a pick down here on this cool little pick peg, and I got a flugel over here. Boom! Awesome. And there's nothing way out on the edges, but it's still, uh, I got some issues with this. It's just, it's a little. So if this is a, a bit of a stagnant display, I think it's great. I think it'll be a great thing to have in the corner of the room or someplace that you can set up and leave it together. Because the problem is with this particular stand, if you're traveling, it's not gonna pack up small. And so you fold this thing up and you kinda got this. Or you can take this apart and you got basically two of these. And then, yeah, you can disassemble all of this stuff and break it down into a relatively small, small piece, but then you've got some assembly time. And it's not gonna be five minutes. It's gonna be to assemble a four horn rig on one of these if it's completely broken down. It can take you probably, it could take you 30 minutes. It could, if you're not necessarily mechanically inclined, it could take you longer than that and then you'll want to ship it back to the store you bought it from because you are too frustrated with it. So you've got to have a little bit of mechanical know-how to use one of these and you could, I don't think it's going to travel well. Now, another throwback stand. This is a stand we used to call a spider stand. It packs up really small. You spin that, drop the legs, spin it again and it locks into place. My goodness, what a genius piece of engineering, in my opinion. You got a plastic flexible tip so that when you put it on, if you come in at an angle, it doesn't, it doesn't dent the horn as readily. And then you've got rubber pieces on each leg so that the horn goes down and it doesn't get scratched because it's sitting on rubber. Again, you can bat this one around pretty good pretty much any direction because it's all the same any side you go. So you have equal footing, if you will, on every side. So you're not going to knock your horn over. Great stand. And the ones that came for flugelhorn had a larger tip. It was just a fatter plastic tip. Boom. And you put it on again. Flugelhorn's not going to go anywhere. And the fatter tip went up into the bell and held the bell a little bit tighter. Great design. German design. Incredible design but I don't think these are available anymore. It's kind of too bad, but this one has been replaced. What's it been replaced by? The venerable K&M five leg. Do not get anything less than a five leg. Okay, the five leg gives you, once again, very equal footing. They spin together, two piece stand, boom, again, look at that. We can play hockey. Whoa, hey, you, you are 
not going to get much more of a sturdy stand than that, and it's very low to the ground. So for some crazy reason, that's taking a heck of a hit. You get that thing knocked over, well, then somebody wanted to punt your horn through the, through the goalpost because it, it takes a lot of force. Great stand. I love k &Ms. I think they're great. Now, you're saying, whoa, I didn't know they made a pick stand. Well, they kind of advertise it as one, they kind of don't. This is a four leg clarinet peg. Boink. Just like it's Big Brothers, that spins right inside the belt and sits there. This is how I travel. All my horns I pack with one of these in the belt. A lot of people are like, oh my God, I can't do that. That's fine if that's not for you. So you don't have to put it in there. They still are really compact. The other one that you can get, I don't like it as much. It scares me a little bit, but you can get another clarinet one that's got longer legs, but if you, if you have it set just right, you're okay, but if somebody kicks it from the side, she's going over, and you don't want that. So again, the foreleg for the pick, I think is really good. You're not knocking that over. The k ms absolutely fantastic stands. Again, I, I pack them by just spinning the legs, boom, drop it in, that's packed up, and then I put this in my case, and I'm done. It goes in my case and it's there. So I love those. Now, if you don't want that, and you don't want to necessarily reach so far down, because these are sitting on the deck. They really are on the ground. Well, we gotta do that again. Let's get these over there. Hercules makes a whole series of stands. I think they're great stands. I think they're very solid, they're really well made, and they're really well thought out. Now, ah, unlike the Hamilton stand, this has a locking leg. Yeah, it moves a little bit, but it's not gonna fold in. So if somebody comes by, if you've got that, that incredibly clumsy sax player, let's see. If you got that incredibly clumsy sax player and he comes by, he's not gonna, it's, it's solid, it's, it's gonna hold. And all their stands are set up that way. I think the Hercules stands are fantastic stands. I just don't want the extra weight or to have the extra carrying problem that I have with these. That's just a personal choice, again, these will break down. You can spin that off. It's not too many spins and you're done. And you can set it up any way you want. You can put different pegs on it. It's a, th it's a, it's a threaded stand. You just drop it in and turn it and it'll, it'll go down solid. You give it a good twist. You're done. You don't have to undo it. You can just throw it in your case like this. Again, locks into place. Great design. Hercules stands. Lots of different choices from them. I think they're great. I just love the fact that I can put these things in the bell of my horn and I'm done. It's there, I don't forget it, and if I forgot my horn, it doesn't matter whether I have a stand or not, does it? So I just go into the bell, boom. Show you a couple more things about the, um, about the uh, k &M stands that you may not have known. Here's where the tips come in. Say you got one of the older models. The new models I really like. They've got that rubber tip on them. It's a, it's a gray rubber tip. Two things, if you're in a dark pit, you're looking down, you can't see these things. They're dark. You can't find them on the ground. The rubber tip helps you know where it is so you can guide your horn right onto it. Now, let's say you've got a throat on the bell that's not necessarily compatible with it. I'm playing my B flat. I got a oh, uh. Okay, if that happens to you and you're like, what the heck? What you do is you get a piece of felt, something thick, cut a circle and drop it on there. And now it doesn't stick. Or you can put some hair bands on there, no joke. Get about four or five just hair bands. Those stretchy hair bands, put those on there. And another reason I say, if you haven't bought one, make sure when you do, get the one with the tip. Because if you're playing that high note and you, yeah, I missed. 
If you miss the high note and slam your horn down, on the old stand, if you come down at an angle, you're gonna hit the side of it and you're gonna leave a big lump in your belt. These, it's not so bad, okay? You've got, you've got a little bit of rubberized tip so that when you come into it, it's not gonna necessarily scratch your horn as bad. Now, the last tip, and this is probably the most important thing that I'm gonna tell you today. If you're playing a gig and the stage is not secure, and I don't mean security guards keeping people off, but that's awful nice. But I'm talking about, okay, a nightclub gig, not a big deal, not a big deal. There's adults there, they're not interested in getting on stage and touching your stuff. But if you're playing a gig where there's kids present, okay, on break, and I, I'm here to tell you, it's happened to me, and that's why I'm telling you, on break, put your horn away. Put the horn away. Because kids will get up onto stage or go in the stage area, because a lot of times when you're playing where there's kids present, there's not a stage. If there are kids there, again, I'm not afraid to pack it. My, my horn is held nice and tight. It's not, it's not shaking like around, so the, the, the stand's not rattling in there. But you're playing a gig, and there's kids there, put your horn away on break. That way, when you pull it back out of the case, it'll probably work. Because you don't want to come back and find out that it got knocked over, and they went, <gasps> and they picked it up and put it down like nothing happened. You go to play that first note, and your valves don't move. That's happened to me. Don't let it happen to you. Case that horn on gigs where you don't have positive control over your instrument while you're on break. All right, until next time, kids. Have a great day.